Here we have a small version of Fouquet's pendulum. Quite simply a weight on the end of a thread. In this case, hanging from a hook, screwed into the top of our door. You can see I've got a patient wife. Fouquet's pendulum was an ideal demonstration of Newton's second law of motion. Okay, so just to show that Newton was so right in so many things, we will draw this back and allow a straight line force of gravity to act on the pendulum and it causes a straight line swing. And I'll leave that for a few turns. And because the force of gravity is straight, its path, apart from the slight wobble I've put into it, is near enough straight. I'll put that rod down below just to give a guidance as to uh, its direction of swing. Nice and simple and straightforward. It's got a slight wobble, as I say, because I can't release it dead straight. Right, nicely proved. Good old Fouquet and Newton. Now we show that both Fouquet and Newton were wrong. Newton's law's first law says that for every, sorry, that the, that the body in motion tends to stay in motion in a straight line until or unless a force acts upon it. And the second and third laws also add to that. Um, the second law is the amount of force required to accelerate a body of a given mass. And the acceleration is the same in both cases because it's gravity. And the third law, of course, says that to every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. I'm just about to show that the, uh, the first and the third law need modifying. Watch and learn. And you will see that the swing path of this now changes slightly on each swing. I can make it change faster by shortening the pendulum or increasing the power going to the device inside the sphere, which I'm sure that all of you know what it is. And you can see quite clearly now, after a few swings, that its path has changed dramatically by about 45 degrees now, and there is nothing pushing from outside uh, against this device. It's just a simple pendulum. What is inside the sphere is what is making it change its course. And what this means, in simple language, is that the third law needs modifying, the first law need, needs modifying, and it is possible to change the direction of something from within itself, i.e. inertial drive, anti-gravity, whatever kind of nonsensical name you want to give it, is possible. Here endeth the first lesson. Clockwise. I shall now release this one, now having reversed the motor direction, and the uh, swing will gradually turn clockwise instead of counterclockwise, which is what it was before. See so if I can line it up roughly with that now. There we go. And away she goes. And after a few swings, you can see already after just two or three that it's starting to change its swing path in a clockwise direction. So Newton can be changed. You just need imagination, a piece of string, a pendulum, and a ball valve float. So much for the Rutherford Laboratories. I think that's clear enough now. <laughs>